So we're one minute behind, so I'm not too bad for a Capetonian. Uh, welcome everybody, welcome everybody watching at home or at office or wherever you're watching it on the live stream. Um, the title of my talk, Coding Words, a practical guide for developers who want to become better writers, is probably the worst talk title I could have come up with, but I struggled between that or, is this not working now? No, of course it isn't. Let me see that then. No, wait, hang on. They say you should never use a tool you've never used before, and that's why. Um, the, the alternate title was How Writing Can Help Your Career as a Developer. Um, so before we get started, who am I? My name is Jonathan Bossinger. Uh, I'm an ex-developer, and I'm currently the senior technical writer at a company called Delicious Brains. If you've never heard of us, I'm not surprised. Uh, we're in the WordPress space. Uh, we do a bunch of awesome plugins for WordPress. We also do a, a managed VPS uh, control panel for specifically customized for WordPress. Um, yes, that means I am an ex-PHP developer, and I'll take all the why is PHP the worst programming language questions after school behind the bike sheds. Um, I'm so glad that joke still works today because I didn't know if schools still had bike sheds. <laughs> um, I'm also a husband and a father. Uh, there's a good chance my wife and kids might be watching this. So hi, Pam. Hi, Ethan. Hi, Luke. Um, and in a previous life, I was a jiu-jitsu instructor, which is why I can get away with that bike shed joke. <laughs> A few notices before I get started. I am a developer and a writer, not a designer, so my slides are pretty boring. So if you came from Candace's talk about marketing and you were expecting slides like that here, you're welcome to leave now. <laughs> I tend to talk very fast when I'm excited about something and I'm excited about what I'm going to talk about today. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I've just finished two Americanos because I'm tired, so I need a speed buddy. So uh, I can't use him because I don't trust the other um, It's <laughs> It's Gareth, right? Okay. All I want you to do is, if I start talking really, really, really fast and you can't understand what I'm saying, just Ross me. Remember Ross and friends? Okay. So just Ross me. Okay. Everybody. Everybody. Just Ross me. So anybody can do it, but I pick somebody in the front because I might not see somebody at the back. Um, no developers were harmed during the preparation of this talk, I promise. And finally, like, comment, subscribe, hashtag winning. There's a, a, a link that you can rate all the talks. Uh, please do rate the talk because you stand the chance to win a smart vacuum or something. Um, and as a developer, if I get rated as the best talk, I think I stand a chance to win a smart vacuum and my wife would really like a smart vacuum. So please, please five star me. Okay. <laughs> um, cool. Five is probably the best I can hope for. <laughs> cool. So before we can start talking about becoming better writers, we first need to talk about what does it mean to become a better writer. Um, I want to mention before I get started that I'm actually writing a book on this topic. And it's not something that you can easily distill into a 40 or 30 minute talk allowing 10 minutes for questions. So I'm going to try and give you an overview. My goal today is to is hopefully so that you walk out of here going, okay, that's what I can do. I've picked up something that I can do to help myself become a better writer. Um, but before I just said that, <laughs> so first we need to look at what does that mean? Um, so as, as I am a good developer, the first thing I did is I went onto Google and I typed in the term writer dictionary and dictionary.com definition of a writer is a person engaged in writing, books, articles, stories, um, a clerk, a scribe or the like, a person who commits his or her thoughts to writing, um, a person who writes or is able to write. Okay. Notice it doesn't say anything about doing it well. So if you can write words, you're a writer. Can anybody here not write words? Awesome, you're all writers, okay? I am, a, I am potentially a marathon runner because I can run. Yes, no? No, I can't run marathons, but I could, right? So what am I getting at? What I'm getting at is it's possible to become a better writer, but you, you don't have to like, not call yourself a writer. If you can write words, you're a writer. Before we think about um, becoming better writers, we need to understand why it's important, why writing is important for your career as a developer. Why should I learn to write better, Jonathan, you might say? What are the benefits? Well, there are a few, in my opinion. Direct benefits. In my opinion, being able to write well makes software better. Okay? Uh, being able to write well means you create better inline comments for your user interfaces. Now, this is not a discussion on whether or not you should have inline comments and whether you should write self-documenting code. This is not that talk. I'm not against self-documenting code. But I had a great chat with, where is he? Danny. There he is, right at the back there. I had a great chat with Danny last night, and he and I both agree that you should be at least commenting your interfaces. So I'll give you a simple example of what I mean by that. One of the plugins we have 
um, at Delicious Brains is a plugin that allows you to migrate one WordPress environment, so local or staging, to a production environment. We also have what was an add-on, it's recently been merged into the core plugin, a CLI component. So if you want to run migrations from the command line, if you're a terminal guy like me, or, or lady like me, and you love writing commands, and you like automation, you can set up your B. You can set up your profiles, and you can run things from the command line. As the senior technical writer at the company, it's my job when we add new commands to document them for our users. So when a new command gets added, there are kind of three ways that I can write that documentation. I can go and dig into the code and figure out how it all works and how it all fits together. I can install the plugin and start working with it and trying to run commands and see what happens. Or I can go to, and this is what our team does really well, the doc block just above the main sort of command line interface that calls all the rest of the code that makes it work. And in that area, it doesn't look like this, and I'll, I'll get to this one in a second. I'm sure we've all seen this comment before. Okay, if you haven't, I'll give you a second. Okay. Now, this is an example, in my opinion, of a really good comment. Someone took the time to write this message and leave it for themselves and future developers. Um, however, we'll also note that some developers don't read the docs because 42 hours were wasted. But in the code, when I get to that initial command, that initial class function that, that's, that triggers the command, the developer has left me a nice big doc block which explains what the command does, how it works, what the arguments are. It's very technical, but it's very well written. So I just read that, understand how everything works, don't have to ping anybody, don't have to DM anybody, whatever, don't have to go digging through code, and I can then take that and write the documentation. Okay. So, writing well makes for better documentation. We've just discussed that. Writing well leads to better team member onboarding. Okay? So, another example. As the technical writer, I'm part of, it's the weirdest thing in the world. For the first time in my life, I'm part of the marketing team. Okay, that was a weird day in my life. And part of what I do is I need to work with marketing and we need to do things that I've discovered recently like internal linking and SEO and keywords and all these things that I don't understand. But one of the tasks that I have is setting up this thing where we um, have some software that reads all the posts on the one side, reads all the posts on the other side, and then makes suggestions for internal links. Okay? So instead of me going and reading the article and saying, hey, that's something we might have written about, let me go find that link, the software does it for us. To do that, I had to set up the two sites on my local environment. So, some time ago, a new developer on the team set up Critical CSS. I have no idea what Critical CSS is. Some of you might know what that's about. I'm not, that's not me. I'm a back-end guy, not a front-end guy. And he implemented some things, and he had included instructions in the readme about this process. And I read those instructions, and they made no sense to me, okay, because I don't understand what's going on. So I had to send him a message, and I had to back and forth a bit. And between him and I, we got to a point where he realized that he didn't write it in such a way. He wrote it in such a way that somebody who, A, understands front-end development really well and understands critical CSS very well and what it's doing and how it's working can implement the steps. I'm a, I'm a back-end PHP guy. Critical C to me, CSS is when I have to fix a button that's the wrong color and I change the color somewhere or something. That's the extent of my work. So between the two of us, we updated that section, and now anybody can come along without any context and run through those steps. Okay, so think about when you have new team members onboarding. Have you written those onboarding steps in such a way that they can just sit down and just go? There's nothing, I'm sure you've all experienced this, maybe you haven't. There's nothing worse than the first day on the job, and you get told, clone the repo and run through the steps. And you run through the steps and you hit a roadblock and you get stuck and it doesn't make sense. Okay, there's nothing more demoralizing than that. Writing well leads to better team collaboration. Um, writing good user stories leads to better defined features. Writing good commit messages leads to better PR reviews. Okay? When, I, when I used to code review, when I used to review other people's work, I used to read the commit messages first to understand what was their thought process, what were they thinking, why did they implement something differently to the way I would, and having all those commit messages was really, really great. And if they were written well, I didn't have to go digging through the code and digging through the commits to see what they were doing. Um, cool. I'm a little bit buzzing off the coffee, which is why I keep checking my notes. Then let's talk about the indirect benefits. Writing good documentation 
be it the inline doc or if you happen to be writing user-facing documentation, means you think about your code differently. I've experienced this many times. It actually started before I became a technical writer when I started learning to write tests for my code. And suddenly I'm thinking about my code in a different way. I'm thinking about the inputs, the outputs, the happy paths, the sad paths. You think about your code differently. When you write about your code, you, it, I don't know if it happens automatically for me or if it's something I do on purpose now, but I end up being a user who knows nothing about that piece of software. And I'm stepping through that. What is the user going to see first? And then what are they going to click on? And I'm looking at it from a different point of view. So I pick up things. I have picked up edge case bugs just because I'm writing the documentation that the rest of the team and the code reviewers and the team leads didn't think of because they didn't look at it from that user-facing perspective. Writing about development increases your hireability. Who here was in Candice's Marketing for Developers talk? Okay. When I sat in that talk on Tuesday, I was like, wow, I hope everybody from that talk comes here because they are so well aligned. Um, I've forgotten the number of times I've met folks who, when I tell them I'm a developer who also enjoys writing, they're like, wow, can I hire you? Because it's a very rare breed. Okay? Um, remote work values good written communication. If, you, if you're not working in a remote, well, most of us are these days because of the pandemic, but if, you, if you're working in a team environment where you're in each other's space and you're able to just go, hey, answer this question, and you suddenly want to move to a fully distributed remote environment, an environment where you might start your day and somebody else ends their day when you start and you need to have some kind of communication, you can't just be like, oh, by the way, hey, when you said that thing, did you mean this? That documentation, that communication, that message, that whatever needs to be super, super clear. Um, if you're involved in the WordPress space at all, there's a company called Automatic. Uh, it's a bit controversial in the space, but anyway, their whole process runs on blogs. They don't email each other. They have these internal blogs called P2s, and everybody writes on those blogs. So when a new member joins, they can just review all the communication for that team since day one. And if something you wrote 10 years ago, it doesn't make sense to the new person now, they're stuffed. Okay? Um, writing opens up possible future career changes. You might one day, as I did, get to a point where you go, I'm 40, and this was a few years ago, I'm, I'm getting tired of the, of the pressure of pushing to production and breaking things and whatever else the case may be, and the stress, and I want to try and change a career path. We're now living in a, in a space where open source is really eating up the world, where people are needing technical writers, developer advocates, developer educators, folks who can convey technical information in an easy-to-consume way. And being able to write well opens up that kind of environment for you. Pretty much every successful freelancer that I have ever met is also a good writer. Because they need to put themselves out there. They need to blog about what they're talking about. They need to find a way to get good clients in. That's exactly what Candace was talking about. She mentions it in her talk. She mentions blogging. She mentions writing tutorials. Um, when I was still working as a freelancer, I was often giving talks about being successful as a freelancer. And the number one question I always was asked was, how do you find clients? And I had two answers. The one was, get involved in local communities. The other one was, write more. Put yourself out there more. Show what you're learning. Show your case study. Show what you're doing. Um, to date, the most popular blog post on my site, and I check the stats every few months, is an article I published in 2016 on how to use anchor links to open accordions in a specific WordPress theme. For those of you into WordPress, uh, you might appreciate this, the Divi theme. Okay? They don't allow you to, when you have a tab, to click on a link and open it in a separate tab. I saw that lots of people were asking about this. I wrote a step-by-step -step guide. And it's still, to this day, the most popular article on my blog. I still, to this day, I've left Divi many, many years since. I've, I'm still in WordPress, but I've left development a few years ago. I still, to this day, get emails from folks who say, I saw your blog. Thank you so much. It works so well. I need X. Can I hire you? Okay? Writing well is the cornerstone of being a thought leader in your field. Now, this is my opinion. All of these slides are my opinions. Let's be real for a second. Thought leadership is merely the expression of ideas that demonstrate you have an expertise in a particular field, area, or topic. Regularly writing in public is the perfect way to express that. Um, speaking at conferences is another good way to do it, but what do you do between the conferences? How do you show that you know what you're talking about? Um, not only that, but being able to speak confidently on a topic is the culmination of experience. And writing not only helps you build that experience 
but showcases it. This talk that I'm giving today is a culmination of five years of active experience writing from blogging to paid gigs to being finally a full-time technical writer. When I did these slides originally, I hadn't met Veliswa yet. Veliswa is a perfect example of this. I don't know, if, have you, how many of you went to her talk on chaos engineering this morning? Okay. I met her for the first time on Tuesday. And Evald introduced us, and, she, and I asked her what she did, and she said she works at AWS as a developer advocate. And I asked her, wow, that's amazing. How did that happen? And she said, well, I was an architect at a bank at the time, and I wanted to learn this AWS thing, so I went and I did the certification, and I, as I was learning things, I blogged about it. I wrote about what I was learning. And through that, she became the first, I think it's the first woman in Africa to be nominated as an AWS hero. How amazing is that? Just through writing. And now she works for AWS as a developer advocate. That is an amazing story. Um, one that I can now tell because she told me about it on Tuesday. She did give me permission to tell the story as well, by the way, in case you're wondering. Okay, so let's get into the practical steps. Now, as I said earlier, this is not something that we can do in a 40-minute session. So I'm going to try and give you some high-level tips and advice. I am in the process of, guess, writing a book about this. And the book will go into all of these things in more detail. Um, and if you want a free copy of the book, hit me up on Twitter and say I was in your talk or I was watching you on, on Slack and I want a free copy. Because I don't actually want to necessarily make money off it. I have a job. I'm happy. I will sell it eventually. But I would like, I'm there to help people. That's my, that's my goal. I'm a very much an open source focused guy. So the goal is basically to create a writing habit. Okay? I mentioned earlier the marathon thing. Two years ago, I decided I want to, uh, for those of you who might know in Cape Town, there's a thing called the gun run. It happens in about October. They have a 5K, a 10K, and a 21K. I have never ran 5Ks in my life, let alone 10Ks. But a couple of years ago, I decided, at about the same time I decided I didn't want to be writing code anymore, that I wanted to get to the point of being able to run a 10K. So did I go out and start running 10K? No. Like any good developer, I went online, I did some Googling, I found a program called the Couch to 5K. I found an app that implements the Couch to 5K, and I started. And it's a very simple program. You start by walking for a minute and running for 90 seconds. So walking for 60 seconds and running for 90 seconds. Don't feel bad, I don't mind. Okay, if it's important, take it, feel free. I've got two boys. If my phone rings right now, it's my wife, I'm out of here. Um, even though she's in Cape Town and I'm up here, I'm gonna go out and do something about it. Um, and, and so you start, you, you run for a minute and a half and you walk for a minute, and you run for a minute and a half and you walk for a minute, and you do that X amount of times in 20 minutes for the first run. And you do that for a week. And then the next week they increase it slightly. So you build a slow, consistent step of progress. And it's the same with writing. Writing well, like any other skill, is a culmination of a series of small, consistent steps. So step number one, create your perfect writing environment. Okay. Those of you who don't, does anybody here not know who Jerry Seinfeld is? Okay. So we all know he's a comedian. We all know he's a very popular comedian who had that show called Seinfeld that um, embarrassed to admit I've never watched. Okay. Happy to, ex to explain why afterwards. There's a specific episode that I watch and I go, huh? And it, I always lose it. But he was asked in a Tim Ferriss um, interview a while back, a podcast a while back, what is your process of writing? And he explained how his whole process worked, but it basically boils down to he creates a perfect space. It's comfortable. It's nice. The air conditioning is perfect. He has his nice chair, the desk that he likes, pen and paper that he likes working with or laptop or whatever. And he says to himself, you don't have to write. And he, and he removes all other distractions. He says, you don't have to write, but that's the only thing you can do. Okay? And he tries to write every single day. He has a calendar on the wall, I think he says. And every day that he writes, he marks off the day that he's written. It doesn't have to be amazing. It doesn't have to be funny. It doesn't even have to make sense. But he writes. Some days it might be a few words. Some days it might be a sentence. Some days it might, but he writes. So every day he's writing. Okay? So choose a platform that suits you. My platform of choice back in the day was Drupal. Those of you who remember Drupal. Okay? Eventually I switched to WordPress because... There were some problems with Drupal. I can't remember what they were at the time. And I wrote a blog post about migrating from Drupal to WordPress. Okay? Um, so it could be Dev2. It could be uh, um, I'm, I'm losing it. Substack, Medium, 
Ghost, whatever your chosen platform. I'd prefer you choose WordPress because I have a love for WordPress, but that's your choice. Right? But find the platform that suits you. It could be a bunch of text files on your computer. It could be Google Docs. It could be whatever. But find a platform that works for you. And then just write about what you're doing, learning, working on, whatever. The, the Valisbe example. Um, my example, the first public thing that I wrote about, and it doesn't actually exist anymore on the web, so you have to go to web.archive.org to find it. It was something I wrote back in 2009. Um, Skulk pointed out yesterday that I even make a comment about if you're using PHP 4, do this, and if you're using PHP 5, do that. Okay? And I just wrote about how I figured out how to in integrate the FCK editor into a framework called CakePHP because there was no information out there on how to do it. And I hacked it together, and if you go and have a look at that code, it's probably awful, and if you read all the comments, people are helping me fix it later on, but I just put it out there to help others. Right. So once you've got step one set up, create a process. Figure out what works for you. Okay? My personal writing process, and I will share these slides in Slack and on my... It's on my blog currently, but I need to update them because I've updated the slides. But I will share it in Slack and on Twitter later. My process is as follows. Step one, I brain vomit. Okay? Apologies if that's a trigger word for anybody. But I, I'm working on something, or I read something, or something happens, and I'm like, load up my blog, new post, dump the link, or a couple of words about it, or a couple of paragraphs, save draft, and I walk away. Just whatever's in my head, I just dump it there. Okay? You don't want to know how many unpublished drafts I have in my blog. Okay? And then I walk away. And then maybe the next day or maybe a few days later when I've worked on other things. So, caveat, I don't follow the right every day for, in my personal environment because my job is to write every day, so I don't have to anymore. But if you're not doing it, try and write every day. Try and work on something else the next day or whatever. Come back the next day. Then I sit down and I start typing my first draft and I start putting things together. Then I take a break. The break could be a few days, it could be a few hours, it could be a week sometimes. And then I come back. And now I do my first edit. So I'm reading through, now I start worrying about grammar, spelling, positioning, does it make sense, I'm kind of shaping it, almost like a, a potter who shapes the clay, you know, I'm kind of getting it ready. Then I take another short break, sorry, talking nonsense, after my first edit, I do my second edit immediately, because all the information is in my head, I kind of got it the way I want it, now I go through it again. During the second edit, I'm starting to ask myself a couple of questions that we'll get to in a second. Okay, so that's the process that I do there, and I'll share that with you in a sec. And then finally, I do a third edit slash review, where I'm just looking for like obvious missing commas or missing full stops or whatever the case may be. That's my process. That's my process after actively following the process for the last five years. It doesn't mean you're going to start doing that process tomorrow. Your process might just be what I was doing in 2009. Hey, guys, I just figured something out. Code, try it, done, publish. Okay, and we'll talk about that in a second as well. If you go into my blog, um, the navigation's horrible. I need to do something about it. But if you can go and find the very first blog article I have, it's literally me going, so I was working on a for loop today in PHP, and I was setting a counter at the top, and then I was incrementing it at the bottom of the loop. And then I figured out that I can set up another function, and I can pass the variable to that function as a reference, Increment it inside the function, pass, pass back the result, and then I don't have to set up the original counter. One li less line of code, yay. Okay? That was my, literally, not in those words, but that's literally the expression. I just brain vomited it out, check for spelling, and hit publish. Okay? Um, so find a process that works for you. If it starts small, that's great, but find something that works. Then, if you're having a day where you're dealing with a lack of inspiration, you've decided you want to try and write every day, you you found your perfect space, you're sitting down, you're ready to rock and roll, and you're like, nothing's there, okay? What I discovered, purely by accident, was a glass of wine. It's really good at getting those creative juices flowing, okay? So whatever helps you relax more, be it wine or a cup of coffee or whatever, use it, okay? I don't drink wine when I'm working, okay? But I, but I have, and I will I'll admit to this, when I'm struggling with a piece of technical writing, I'll leave it, go home, have some wine, and then come back in the evening and work on it a little bit. Okay? Not half a bottle of wine, just one glass, one, one nice sized glass, just to kind of get those creative juices flowing. Um, I haven't been tracking my time. Oh, no, I have been tracking my time, so we're fine. Um, what time does this finish? I've actually forgotten. At four. At four. Okay, awesome. Um, 
Cool. Now, step three. Learn to self-edit your own writing. So wherever this process of editing flows in your process, learn how to self-edit. When I was in high school, um, those of you who are older than 40 might remember there were these, um, these uh, guide to stu study guide books that you could read that sort of t taught you about mind mapping and how the brain works and how to study better. And one of the chapters was about how your mind takes in information. And if you, can if you can increase the amount of senses that you use to take in information, you retain that information better. So instead of just reading it, then you write it out. Or read it aloud, record it, and then listen to it back. Or find a way to turn it into a drink. I don't know how that's going to work. But try and incorporate more senses. Maybe have a drink while you're reading it. Maybe that'll work. Okay? So often when I'm writing, I might read it aloud or record it, back and, and record it and play it back to myself. When I'm preparing for talks, which is very similar to writing... I'll actually structure the talk, and then I'll record it, and then when I'm driving somewhere, and I know I've got like a 40-minute drive, I'll play it back in the car. Because now I have to concentrate on driving, so it's kind of in the back, and I'm kind of like a, an attendee, I don't have context, and I might pick up a few things. And then while you're editing, and these are the questions that I was talking about, ask yourself these four questions. Is it easy to read? Like when I read the sentence, do I just get what the sentence is saying? Does it make sense? Could this be said in fewer words? If you're not an experienced writer, you might find that you start using lots of words because you feel like you need to explain. And if, and if you come back a few days later, and that's why I take those breaks in between those steps, you might sit there and go, well, hang on, I can just take out these words and put that one over there, and then it makes so much more sense. Does it make sense to me? In other words, as I'm reading this with the context that I have about this topic, does it make sense to me? And then does it make sense without any context? Okay? And this is where if you have someone in your life, in my case it's my wife, I might give it to her and ask her to read it and say, does this set up right? Does it make sense? Um, I mentioned earlier about the jiu-jitsu instructor for a reason. One of the things that, so I actually went through a course that I had to go through to be able to teach. And one of the things that we learned in that course was, because you're teaching something that for some people might be overly technical, may, and you've got a group of different levels of students in front of you, try and make sure that you teach to the lowest common denominator, but then add something in for the advanced student. And I try and apply that to my writing and my speaking. So earlier, when we were going through the benefits, most of you might be here today going, yes, I want to write better. I know why I need to write better. Just get on with it, please. But there might be somebody who doesn't, who just saw the talk and went, that's interesting. Let me go and find. But they don't yet know why they need to learn to write better. So I always try and cover those bases. And that's where the without any other context comes in. Okay. Step four, publish early and often. Treat your writing as you would if you were building a startup app. What do they say? Ship version one. Get it out there. Don't over-polish. Right? It's different when it's in a production environment, so it's different when it's your work. We're, doing, we're talking about writing in your personal capacity. Don't be afraid to put it out there. Don't let perfect become the enemy of good. Don't spend too much time polishing that writing. Because feedback is good. right? But have a plan to manage feedback, and that's step five. So learn the difference between good feedback and negative feedback and the difference between negative feedback and trolls and don't feed the trolls, all right? In the, in the bus from the, from the airport yesterday, the speakers were, we were discussing News24 back in the day while they still had comments, right? We all remember what a, what a dumpster fire that was. But I have, on my blog, I have a plugin installed that manages spam. Anything that it picks up as spam, it puts in a spam folder. All other comments are unpublished until I moderate them, Okay? Another thing I want to mention, in my opinion, all feedback is good, even the negative feedback. Because often what we as writers perceive as negative feedback is just constructive criticism. But because it's criticizing our baby that we published early and put out there and we're very worried about, we feel like it's negative feedback. Yes, there are trolls. There are people who will comment just to be, my kids might be watching so I can't say a naughty word, pains. Okay? Um, but you need to learn to manage that. So you need to either disable comments or find a way to manage. What I, so, is Skulk here today? No, great, I can tell this story. Um, so I am a very emotional person about my work. So I'm still struggling to, thank you, I'm still struggling to manage some negative feedback that I take as negative, but it's actually just constructive criticism. And I have situations where I get that feedback and I'm like, I'm terrible. I'm a terrible writer. Okay? 
And what happened to me once is I was in the process of editing an article that somebody else had written. And something wasn't working while I was editing it because I was editing the technical parts. And so I went, well, I can't do this, so I made a change higher up in the chain. We've all done this in our code before. And it was about writing an automated backup script. And I ended up moving that automated backup script into the public web route. And that automated backup script has all the database credentials in it. And I didn't spot it. I did not spot it. Because I was so focused on the words and does it work and does it make sense and is it good that I missed it up here. And the comment that I got was, I would have thought you would have picked this up. And I went home that day and I finished half a bottle of wine, not a glass. And I said to my wife, love, please don't talk to me right now. I'm in a really bad space. Because if you talk to me, we're going to fight. Because I am not dealing right now. And I woke up the next day and I realized it's okay. Mistakes do happen. That's why we have a review process at work. Okay? So, number one rule, if you're dealing with any kind of credentials on your personal writing, don't. <laughs> okay? You shouldn't be in the first place. So stay away from that kind of things. But be prepared for those possibilities and have a way of managing it. Okay? Cool. And then step six, find external opportunities to write. Start with personal blogging in your, you know, in your personal capacity. When you're feeling comfortable, look for writing opportunities at your place of work. If, you're, if your company has a blog or has articles or you work for a place like Office Zen that has, you know, AWS that have all these things going on, look for places to do it. Submit pitches to online publications, yearly writing events or competitions. Um, those of you who remember things like Web Advent, where they just are looking for any kind of article about something interesting for the 24 days leading up to Christmas. Um, those kind of places. And then when you feel like you're getting to a point where you're reaching the upper limit of your feedback chain, look for opportunities where your writing will be edited and reviewed by somebody who knows what they're doing. I jumped from being an okay writer to a slightly better okay writer when I wrote for a, a platform called Skyward, where I actually had an editor, like somebody who was trained as an editor, editing my writing. And I learned so much through that process. I was fortunate that I was paid at the time, which was great. Um, but look for those kind of environments. Cool. Lauren Fisher in Slack says, can't wait for the book. Yeah, neither can I, Lauren. <laughs> and then a bonus tip, don't be afraid to use good writing tools. Okay, we're developers, we love automation, we love linters, we love things that test our code for us. Grammarly is a great resource, there's a free version. I've used Grammarly for a number of years now. Uh, I use Grammarly Pro at work because I get it paid for at work. But be aware of their limitations, okay? Be careful not to use it too much. It should be used only when you need to write something. A better way to write is to use a text editor. Can anybody tell that that was written by an AI? Okay, because it it's words, and they're sentences, and separately they kind of make sense, but they make no sense to what I'm saying here. Okay, so those three lines were written by, not Grammarly, but another AI, using the contents, context of the slide before it and the rest of my slides, and the first two words of each line. Okay, so sometimes the automated tools aren't perfect. So they're not, they're gonna, and you might be, you might need to argue with them, especially when it comes to using something like Grammarly in a technical environment. If you're writing technical stuff, you're gonna be using technical terms it doesn't understand. Um, there was a word recently, I can't remember what it was, but Grammarly kept telling me I was spelling it wrong, and I was like, I'm not, I promise you, and I had to add it to my dictionary. Okay, um, so don't be afraid to use them, but beware of their limitations. That is my talk. Thank you very much for sitting through all 35 minutes of it. Are there any questions? Yes. How do you get people? How do you get people? How do you get people to read what you write? So that's a very good question that I didn't even think of because I've never thought of it before because I've never worried about it. Okay. Um, how I got that blog post that I was talking to you about is I, I joined a community around WordPress, around the theme that I was using at the time, and I, and I kept an ear out for common problems. And then I wrote... I, I, so, those of you who are in the WordPress space, and, and sorry, it's Xander, huh? Xander and I were chatting about this earlier, about they don't need, like, really senior developers, generally, right? They need somebody who can just help with some slightly technical issues. Um... And so I was, I wouldn't call myself senior, but I was experienced. I was a PHP dev way before I was a WordPress dev, probably about 10, 10 years of PHP before I hit WordPress. And so I was listening out for those technical problems that they were struggling with. 
Um, and then I would write about it. And then I would share it with that community. And then it, it gathers steam. So I've never looked for those kind of things. Um, were you at Candace's talk about marketing? Go watch the live stream. She'll have a lot of answers for you there. Okay, if, and those of you at home, if you didn't see Candace's talk and you want to look for how to market yourself and get people to read your content, I highly recommend her talk. Does that answer your question? I'll come back to you if there's nobody else. Okay, anybody else have questions? I'm going to just, I'll come to you and I just want to check the live stream. There's nothing in the live stream? This thing? Oh, wow, there's somebody with a, with a mic and everything. Pass it down. Pass, pass, pass. Hi, John. Is this on? Is the mic on? Is it on? Testing, testing. You've got to beatbox it. Hello? There we go. All right. Um, so uh, I've, been, uh, interested in, I've been interested in writing for a while, although I haven't actually pulled the trigger as such. Um, and I've seen uh, there's a guy called Sean, I forget his name, is uh, SWYX is his handle on Twitter. And he uses Twitter as a kind of pre-writing space where you'll throw out ideas and um, kind of see how they land before they're kind of fully formed. I don't know if you have opinions on, on that. Um, so I haven't, I haven't quite figured out if I, if I um, meet the requirements, but I'm pretty much a boomer. Okay, I'm for, I turned 45 this year. I think that qualifies. Um, so for me, social media is I'm on social media because of conferences, and I use it as my, as my old man yells at the cloud space. Okay, so when I have a rant that I want to just put out in the world, I stick that on Twitter. Um, what I have done, and so the book that I'm writing, I actually attempted to start writing it during the pandemic because I thought, hey, I've got all this extra time that I'm not doing something with. Um, and I use Twitter to reach out to folks in my, in my sort of Twitter community to say I'm looking for reviewers to review my work. So that's something definitely I've done. Um, personally, I tend to be a very verb both writer and talker. You've probably noticed I like talking, okay? Um, so I find Twitter to be limiting in terms of that. Um, but I can definitely see how it could work. And, and I, think, I think getting... So what I discovered in that process um, of, of looking for reviewers is I actually looked for feedback too early. I started looking for reviewers before I started writing the book. I should have finished a bunch of chapters first because what I was doing was I was asking folks to review chapter one without any further context of what was going on later on down the line. And so they were saying things like, I don't know if you're going to cover this, but, and I don't know if you're going to, and I know I'm going to cover it, but they don't have the rest of the book to read to know that. Um, so that's my personal concern about, you know, using Twitter for that, because you might get the wrong feedback too early. Um, you know, when I, when I build a piece of software, when I build a solution for a client, I send them what I call an alpha version, but it's pretty much almost there and there's a few bugs but I don't send it to them too early because they're going to start giving me feedback of, I tested it and this doesn't work. And I'm like, yes, I haven't got there yet. Um, so that's my personal opinion on, I don't want to get feedback too early. But I can, I can see how it does work for some people. I hope that answers your question. Okay, cool. I just want to check Slack if there's any questions on there. Yes, there are some questions. Uh, I'm going to just jump to Slack quickly for folks don't mind. Um, so Mpo says, how do you overcome writer's block? I mentioned earlier, dude, I, I have a glass of wine and that gets me every time. Um, but as I was saying earlier, if you have writer's block, then don't write about what you're trying to write about. Write about something else. Just write. I have, <laughs> I have blog posts sitting in draft that is literally me going, because I want to write every day. I don't know what to write about a day. I'm really not feeling it. I'm feeling kind of down. I'm feeling kind of upset. I've had a rough day. But at least I'm writing today. That's what I wrote for the day. So write about what you're feeling. It doesn't have to ever get published but right. Um, and then he says, how do you decide what to work on next when you've completed an article? So I'm going to answer that in, with two things. If you're doing it for personal reasons, whatever you're working on, whatever you're working on learning, obviously don't give away company information. So if, you, if it is something that you can share in your job that you can share, go for it. Or if it's something you're busy learning, my there's a time. Okay. I'm going, to, I'm going to make that the last question. The folks who have asked further questions, I'll try and answer them in Slack later. If you, want to, if you have questions here and you want to ask them, you can come up to me afterwards anytime. I'll be hanging around or in Slack. But I'm going to wrap it up and say, um, what's the question? Work on next. Yes. Um, my, pers my blog is a combination of my technical stuff and just my day-to-day -day stuff. 
So I think there's a post on there about something I was learning outside of work. There might be, there's, there's a couple of articles on there about my running journey. There's some articles there about my experiences in building computers because I love building computers. Just write about whatever you're living and going through. It's that process of just writing every day. You know, running every day. Slow, consistent, step by step by step. Okay, we are out of time, so I do apologize. Thank you all very much for coming. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter and Slack if you've got more questions.